Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for the pastor's midweek Bible study. My name is Hubert Cunningham and I'm the pastor at uh, Pennington United Methodist Church and we have been studying the book of Romans this month and we're going to conclude our study of the book of Romans today as we focus on Romans chapter 5. But before we get to Romans chapter 5, I want to give you a little uh, church history that would help you form a better understanding of why Romans chapter 5 is so significant. The first reason is uh, God established the church when he said to Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And that began the church. And you remember Peter was the first leader of the church. And on uh, uh, the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, it was Peter who responded to the people when they said, what shall we now do when the Holy Spirit came upon them? It was Peter who said, repent ye therefore every one of you for the remission of sins and be baptized. And the scripture tells us that some 3,000 people were added to the church on that day. Well, Peter continued to be the leader of the New Testament church and in Acts chapter 9 we discovered that Paul found salvation. Uh, he became uh, one that became the great missionary uh, to the Gentiles and was spreading the gospel even further. Not only was uh, Peter spreading the gospel to the Jewish people and become, making Jewish converts to Christianity, but now Paul was spreading the gospel to the Gentiles and they were becoming uh, uh, converts as well. Well then uh, we have uh, what has formed the church at Rome or the Roman Catholic Church and Catholic is one of those terms that should not scare you it should just help you to know that Catholic means universal and it was the universal church until uh, 1054 and in 1054 we have in church history what is known as the Great Schism. And what happened in 1054 in a nutshell was that the Bishop of Rome, who is the Pope, ex excommunicated the Bishop of Constantinople. And so now we have the Church of the East and the Church of the West. You say, well, why in the world did the Bishop of Rome excommunicate the Bishop of Constantinople? Well, the reason why is almost trivial. But for them, it was extremely important. He excommunicated him because of a dispute over whether or not leaven or unleavened bread should be used for Holy Communion, for the Eucharist. Well, it's amazing to me how God has spread the gospel using such uh, uh, things as the schism, the great schism of 1054 and other things to help us to uh, have the gospel known in all parts of the world. Well, we had two uh, different churches. We had the Church of the East, the Church of the West, until 1517. And up into that, right before uh, 1517, we had a Roman Catholic monk by the name of Martin Luther, who was not only a monk, but he was also a professor at the University of Wittenberg of Moral Theology. And so what happened was he uh, wanted to find a pathway to salvation. Now the church taught about indulgences, the church taught about laws, the church taught about works, the church taught about uh, the right doctrines and everything in order to help them to discover salvation. But uh, Ro uh, Martin Luther said, I believe it's more. And so he kept searching and searching and searching. He was reading the book of Romans and he came to Romans chapter 5 and that's when he had an epiphany experience and the light came on and he realized what salvation was all about. Well what happened in Romans chapter 5? Well in Romans chapter 5 uh, we find in the first four chapters of Romans that Paul does a great job talking about the sinfulness of human beings. And not only the sinfulness of human beings, but our inability to redeem ourselves. Uh, remember Paul talks about law versus grace. Uh, you know, he talks about all of those dichotomies. 
And so he, he helps us to understand that we are sinners, that we fall short of the glory of God, and that even though we are sinners, that we are helpless. We cannot do anything to merit, earn, to redeem ourselves. We are hopelessly lost. Well, that's a gloomy, bad picture. But in Romans chapter 5, he gives us the good news. He says in Romans chapter 5, there is justification by faith alone. Martin Luther read that and he realized that was the key to salvation. It was faith alone. Now what do we mean by faith alone? Well, faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what it is. And so Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the church door there in uh, Wittenberg and started the Protestant Reformation, the protest movement. Now today I'm standing outside the First Lutheran Church in downtown Nashville uh, to help us realize that this church, the denomination, the Lutherans, uh, were the ones who uh, said we need to reform the church. We need to rethink the way we do church because the way we're doing it is not right. And so they really looked at three different issues as a way of reforming the church, uh, things like the supremacy of God, meaning that the church was not supreme, but God was. The authority of Scripture, meaning that Scripture had authority, that it spoke as God spoke to the world. And also, God's grace. Those were the three things that uh, we discover from uh, the Protestant Reformation. There were other people that participated in the Protestant Reformation as well, people like John Calvin and others who helped us have what we have today, the Protestant church. But it was uh, because uh, people like Martin Luther was reading in the book of Romans and discovered that little phrase, justification by faith alone. Well, we uh, have been now a little over 500 years uh, since the Protestant Reformation when Martin Luther nailed those 95 theses to the church door in Wittenberg. But as we uh, have progressed along, somewhere along the way, maybe we have come to the point in place where we need to be reminded of those words from Paul. We may, might need to be reminded uh, that the church, even now, might could use some reformation, getting back to where God wants the church and where the church should be. But some of the eternal truths that we learn from that Protestant Reformation are still true today. For example, we are sinners lost, hopelessly lost. And no matter what we do to redeem ourselves, no matter how good we are, how many good works we do, we cannot redeem ourselves. We cannot redeem ourselves through the law. We cannot redeem ourselves through moral uh, externals. We can only redeem ourselves through the blood of Jesus Christ. Faith alone in the blood of Jesus Christ who atones for our sins. That's what Martin Luther wanted us to uh, grasp and understand. That's what John Calvin wanted us to understand. And by the way, just a little note, Methodists and the Lutherans split along the way as well over a little issue too. And that was, uh, can perfection be attained here on earth? Uh, Methodists said yes, Lutherans said no. Now, what does that mean, perfection? Well, it means Christian perfection, and John Wesley wrote a whole book about the doctrine of Christian perfection, which means that uh, we are people that uh, are either sanctified wholly or we're moving in that direction, meaning that we totally accept and embrace the will of God. That becomes the appetite for our soul. Lutherans, on the other hand, disagreed a little bit about that and said we can only fully embrace the will of God and have a complete appetite for the things of God only after we have died. Well, anyway, the Lutherans are a great church who do great works, and the Methodists are too, and so we're not in com uh, competition with each other. We're really partners in spreading the gospel through all the world, as is the church in the East and the church in the West, even today, are not our adversaries, but our advocates in spreading the gospel. And we should remember that. 
Well, I hope that you'll take some of those things into consideration. I hope you'll read uh, Romans. At least read Romans 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and uh, you'll have a greater appreciation for the faith that we have and embrace as Protestant Christians who believe exclusively in the blood of Jesus Christ to save us from our sins and to give us new life in Christ. We want to go to the Lord in prayer uh, today and remember some of the requests that uh, has come our way. And one of those requests is that Amy Wood, who is in the healthcare profession, has uh, tested positive for the coronavirus and uh, is uh, ill. We want to remember uh, Amy and her family, uh, people that are healthcare professionals are on the front line of this. And I know that Laura McCullough is a nurse and she's also uh, been exposed numerous times. And I think about teachers and I think about others that are on the front line. We need to lift those people up in our prayers. And Amy is one of those people today that I want you to pray for especially. I want you to remember Glenda Chrisman as uh, she uh, has some health issues. Joan Pay uh, with uh, her recovering from surgery. She just had a uh, PET scan uh, yesterday, so we want to remember her. Also, Louise Stedman, this is uh, Heath Harden's uh, aunt. She is facing uh, heart surgery, major heart surgery. It's a very troubling time, so remember Louise in your prayer. Also, Donna Sue Swain. Uh, this is Carl Marshall's sister, and she is also uh, struggling with uh, COVID-19 and needs our prayers. She is positive. Also, Robert Webb. Uh, Robert has been transferred to hospice, and we want to remember him in our prayers as well as his family. Also, Frida McClellan uh, and Brother Ed. Uh, Frida is struggling with cancer treatments and uh, has to go for a scan later this week, and Brother Ed is struggling and they just need our prayers and they need God's help and God's blessing upon their life. Larry Summers, as he continues to struggle with uh, cancer, uh, be with uh, not only Larry, but we pray that God's presence will be with Vicki as well. Joe and Bill Hardison, uh, both of them are people that are, are struggling physically. Bill is in the uh, uh, home there for uh, uh, people that are struggling with uh, memory issues and so forth. And Joe is at home. She is uh, homebound, can't get out very much. So let's pray for them. And also Billy and Carol Cage. Billy and Carol was at church Sunday and Carol uh, was telling me that uh, she is uh, fearful that one of the aneurysms that she has is uh, growing. So they are greatly concerned. So remember her. And also Louise Henderson. Louise is struggling with uh, cancer treatments as well. Uh, she's been changed to a new medication and some days is good and some days are not so good. Uh, Mary Lee took her, I, I was going to take her to the uh, uh, cancer doctor yesterday. Uh, I think that they're working something out, but let's pray for Louise. And also Reverend John Carpenter. John is a former pastor of uh, Pennington. He is struggling with uh, cancer and we want to lift him up in our prayer. Susie Carsoner, she is our organist. She had very serious surgery. Uh, she is still recovering from surgery uh, several weeks out. Uh, I was talking to her the other day and she said that it's still uh, not where she needs to be and she's still not back at work, so let's pray for her. And also Mark Tangsley. Uh, Mark is recovering from surgery and we need to lift him up in prayer that he'll be able to be made well and whole and strong. Also, we want to remember Brian Parkinson. Uh, Brian is uh, the grandson of uh, the Goings that uh, watch us uh, virtually and live in O'Hickory. And Brian has been tested positive for the COVID virus as well. And we need to remember him in our prayers. Also, Pam Binkley calls occasionally and seems like there's uh, issues, uh, health issues in her family. And she's, she depends on us to pray for her and her family. And we want to be faithful and do that. As well as pray for our nation. We're at a very critical time in our nation. We're facing an election in just a few days. Uh, our people are divided, uh, not very kind to each other. Uh, it's difficult. But let's pray that God will uh, help us to be a little kinder and a little nicer toward each other and that even though we may disagree, we 
will still agree to be disagreeable, okay? And uh, pray for those that get elected, that God will keep his hand upon them and that they'll be leaders that uh, lead out of a divine providence of God. Also remember those uh, all over the world that are suffering from the COVID-19 virus. Uh, it is uh, rising here in uh, Middle Tennessee and the United States, but in other places it is uh, devastating, uh, even more so than it is here. And so we want to lift up uh, those that are suffering from that and those in the medical community that are working feverishly to come up with a cure that they will be able to do that. And so we want to pray for them. If you would, would you join your heart with mine as we approach the Lord in prayer just now. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, how good it is on a busy afternoon that we can find a place to pray and to seek the face of God. And we pray that as we seek the face of God that your spirit will be with us, will help us. We especially pray today for those that are struggling physically, that they may experience the presence of God and the healing touch of God, the reassurance of God, that you have everything under control and that you can make people well and whole. You created us in the beginning, and you can recreate us even now. We pray for those that are going through unusual circumstances. The stress level is so high because of maybe unemployment, maybe because of the economy, maybe because of decisions that has to be made. I pray for those that uh, will soon be evicted from their homes because uh, of the unable to pay their rent during the, the, the uh, pandemic. I pray for those that are going through divorce and those that are struggling with addictions and those that are going through unusual circumstances in life. But most of all, O oh God, I pray for those that are lost without Christ and who need salvation. I pray that they will experience the good news of the gospel, that they will realize that they are sinners lost from God and the only way out is to trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray, O oh God, that you will help them to experience the salvation that you offer. Be with us in every aspect and area of life that we might glorify you and lift your name above all other names. For it's in the blessed name of Christ we ask this favor. Amen. A couple of things I want you to remember. Uh, first of all, this Friday evening, uh, we're going to have uh, Halloween Howdy. It is a drive-through uh, event, primarily for the children in our community. Uh, we'll be able to hand out treats to them, uh, candy and so forth, and greet them. And we want you to uh, feel free to come by and join that with us. It's going to be a great event. It's from 4 p.m. until 6 p.m. this Friday at the church. And then remember this Sunday. This Sunday is All Saints Day. That is a holy day in the life of the church. It's one of the most holy days in all the year at the church. We will honor those that have passed from our ranks and went from our ranks to the church triumphant. And a couple of those that uh, are part of our church would be Dwayne Leedy, who was a member of our church, passed away a few months ago. And also uh, Charlie Heimerman, uh, his mother, Elizabeth, passed away and uh, last uh, Saturday evening, so we will remember her. But I, I want us to remember others that have passed away as well. And it's always a special time with the uh, bell tree coming in, the worship service, to remind us of their presence and of the pain and the hurt that we feel. But we want to remember them, and I hope you'll join us this Sunday as we worship God and uh, remember the saints that have passed from us. Now, you can join us in person, 1030 in the sanctuary. We take a lot of precautions to make sure that uh, you are safe. Uh, we social distance, we, we make sure that everyone wears a mask. There's a team that comes by and cleans everything in the church. We have done everything we possibly can to keep you safe. And we're very proud of the fact that we've not had one person exposed to the virus or have one case of the virus that is traceable back to the church. And we're grateful for that. And I'm grateful for the team of people that have worked so diligently to make that possible. 
So you will be worshiping in a safe environment if you come and worship with us in person. If you are not uh, comfortable doing that, that's understandable and that's all right. You can worship with us online. Our uh, Facebook page, Pennington United Methodist Church, will direct you to the YouTube location or you can go directly to the YouTube location at Pennington United Methodist Church and you will find it there. It's a great resource. It's a great way to worship with us. And people are worshiping with us near and far. And uh, Dale Sawyer has been the... Uh, faithful servant who has made sure that this happened and so if you want to worship with us that way that is entirely okay and of course you can also study the scriptures with us each Wednesday as I bring you the midweek Bible study I hope that uh, these times have been helpful to you and that you will uh, grow spiritually even though it's very difficult during these times but God loves you and God cares for you enough that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for your salvation now may God richly bless you until we meet next week.